Um, right, welcome to our session on copyright. Um, we've got 60 minutes to chew over a very important subject. Uh, to set the scene quickly before I introduce the speakers, um, Beck2 has really two principal interests in copyright. I should introduce myself actually, I'm Tony Lennon from the Research Office and one of, part of my brief is to look after copyright for the union. I mean, what is copyright? Um, I mean, in this country, I think it's probably safe to say that it's viewed as a property right. Um, and it's sometimes perceived to be what's known as a negative right, in that it gives you the right to stop people doing things with your, protect, you know, your intellectual creations rather than um, giving you a positive right to do some things with it. Now, the way that copyright works is that we have a finite list of copyright works in this country. So not everything is cap that you create is capable of copyright protection. And I'm just going to sort of run through those. I mean, literary works is probably one that's relevant to you here because there'll be copyright in things like scripts, sort of articles, books, that kind of thing. Dramatic works, dance, plays, mimes, artistic works, photographs, paintings, drawings. I mean, these aren't exhaustive sort of examples. Um, musical works, sound recordings, very importantly to you all, films. Um, broadcast, cable programmes and published editions. Now works have to be original to be protected and originality doesn't mean that the work needs to be inventive or imaginative but it means that it has to have some kind of expenditure of labour, skill and effort. Um, now the other thing that's important is that there's no, unlike in the USA, there's no system of registration of copyright work in this country so once you've created your work you don't have to go off and register it in order to gain protection. Um, work has to, I mean, a work is created or protected, should I say, the minute it's created, provided that it's recorded in some kind of permanent form. So a conversation on a bus that you're telling somebody about your idea or something, that, that's not copyright protected. Um, who, um, the, a work has to qualify for protection and that, that quali qualification means by reference to the author being a British citizen or domicile or residence in the UK or by reference to the country of first um, publication. So who owns copyright? Um, the first owner of a literary, dramatic, um, artistic or musical work is the author or the creator, and this also implies to commissioned work. So that's really important that if somebody commissions you to do a piece of work, you don't you know, divest yourself of ownership of copyright. They've got to buy the copyright from you in whatever form you decide to give it away. Um, Films, it's important to realise, is jointly owned in terms of the default legislation under the 1988 Act. So um, under the Section 10.3 of the governing um, CPDA, which is the Copyright Patents and Designs Act 1988, it's owned by the principal director and the producer. And it's always jointly owned unless there's some kind of agreement to the contrary. And um, the, the definition of producer is defined in the Act as the persons by whom the arrangement for making the film are undertaken undertaken and that's that's more than simply financing the, the project I mean it's it's usually the personal production company who decides to undertake the project organizes the production arranges the finance etc etc and director is given its ordinary general meaning it's likely to be the person who's got creative control of the film um, in terms of a broadcaster that's the maker a sound recording is the record producer um, the only exception to this issue of the author creator being the owner of the work is if the, the work is created in the course of employment but I don't imagine that many of you are affected by that but if for some reason you are you know contracted as an employee you will your default position is that you will not own copyright in the work that is owned by the employer um, unless you agree exceptions to the contrary so what rights you conferred on you as the copyright owner well you've got the right as we sort of talked about you've got exclusive rights to prevent other people from doing things to your work which the most important being copying your work issuing the work to the public, renting, lending your work, performing the work in public, making adaptations to the work. So there's a number of activities that you control, and it's all about control. That's what copyright gives you, the control to use your work. In the world of sort of TV production, that where does that kind of, how does that kind of hamper people? I mean, I think the, the, the main way that it sort of hampers people is obviously getting protection for your ideas, um, particularly if you've developed an idea into a TV format. What are you actually sort of doing with that format in terms of being able to obtain protection from it? Um, and unfortunately, it is very difficult to kind of take these ideas in this TV format idea and squeeze it into the existing um, structure of, of, of copyright legislation because Surprisingly, very surprisingly, the, the um, copyright legislation still doesn't give a distinct separate copyright protection to the word TV format. So when we talked about my list of what is protected by copyright works at the beginning of my talk, I didn't add to that list TV format. 
And that's because despite recent reviews of Cargreaves and Gowers and all these big government reviews of how to change the copyright word, that still hasn't actually become an ex a distinct category of copyright protection. So what are we going to do about this? I mean, it's, you know, it is a real issue because what you're having to do is squeeze your TV formats into one of the existing categories of copyright protection that are out there. And the two kind of most obvious ones that people use is uh, literary works and um, dramatic works. So I think let's talk about dramatic words. The problem we're trying to argue that your TV format is a dramatic work is that it's not capable of being performed generally. So that kind of excludes it from the protection of a dramatic work. So what people tend to do is try and sort of argue that you know, the TV format is a literary work. And I think provided that they are sufficiently detailed and elaborate and documented in writing, you may be able to argue before a law that your TV format um, is you know, worthy of copyright protection as a literary work. But the sort of real problem is then, um, what value does that really offer? Because the question of infringement is the next hurdle that you need to prove. It's not just enough to show I've got a copyright protected work. As we talked about, you have to prove that your copyright, the whole of the substantial part of your work has been infringed.